The Naz and Wally Sports Hour is a paid program. Opinions expressed on the show are those of Naz and Wally and their guests. From hockey to wrestling, football to golf, no sport left unturned. You're listening to the Naz and Wally Sports Hour on Zuma Radio. Good morning, Naz. Good morning, Wally. Neil, the boys are back. Let's talk sports. Good morning and welcome to the Naz and Wally Sports Hour. We are live from Liberty Village in downtown Toronto on the new AM740. And if you're listening in downtown Toronto, we're also on 96.7 FM. Pleased to uh, welcome you to the Naz and Wally Sports Hour. We're going to do a St. Michael's College School tribute show today. And I'm pleased to welcome in studio this morning, Father Jefferson Thompson, the president of the school. Welcome, Father. Good morning, Walter. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. And the uh, COO, Chief Chief Officer of the school, Greg Hook. Good morning, Greg. Morning, Walter. Great to be here. It's it's great to have you. I understand you're also, I'll introduce you. uh, Can we call you a basketball star from the 1970s? (laughs) I played basketball. That would be about as far as we go. <laughs> Anyways, we, I just want to give the listeners a little bit of a roadmap for the show. We wanted, uh, wanted to do a St. Michael's show for a long time. There's been some special people that we've talked to on this show over the years, and uh, we want to bring them into the discussion just to let everybody know. We will be talking today to the greatest Toronto Maple Leaf in history, David Keon. David, uh, a graduate of St. Michael's College School from 1960. Uh, the owner of the Ottawa Senators, Eugene Melnick, will be joining us in the middle of the hour. Eugene, uh, also uh, one of the great benefactors of St. Michael's College School and a graduate of St. Michael's College School, I believe class of 1977 or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. And later on in the hour, another friend of the Nazawali Sports Hour, Leo Routens, uh, St. Mike's grad, a uh, great basketball player. I believe you played a little bit of basketball with him, didn't you, Greg? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll certainly talk about uh, talk about Leo and uh, his remembrances from the school and uh, what made uh, St. Michael's College School, uh, what made it and what makes it uh, a special place in so many different ways. The St. Michael's College School statistics are pretty astounding in terms of its sports excellence. 218 hockey players have walked the halls of St. Michael's College School at some point in time. Um, Some great Hall of Fame hockey players, NHL, listen to some of these names. Bobby Bauer, Jerry Cheevers, Red (coughs) Kelly, Tim Horton, Dave Keon, Ted Lindsay, Frank Mahovlich, Eric Lindros, and of course uh, uh, the builders and coaches, Father David Bauer, Father Murray Costello, Jim Gregory, Incredible, astounding achievement, but St. Michael's, St. Michael's College School is not just in the past. It's in the present, and it's part of the future as well. Listen to some of these names that have attended the school recently. Jason Spezza, Andrew Cogliano, Tyler Sagan, Toronto Maple Leafs own Mitch Marner and Connor Brown, Max Domi, Dominic Moore, Eric Lindros, Rick Tockett. Certainly a special place. But the foundation of St. Michael's College School is the congregation of St. Basil's. Um, interesting history, St. Michael's College School. And Father Thompson, I want to, uh, want to chat with you a little bit about that. Um, St. Michael's College School is in its 165th anniversary. It is. Uh, it was um, uh, opened, settled, founded, founded, I guess is the better term, in 1852. Yes. Um, in, uh, it wasn't in its current location back then, but uh, tell me a little bit about the Congregation of St. Basil's. It's, it's a Catholic order. Um, how did the, Saint, the Congregation of St. Basil's come to Toronto? And tell us a little bit about its mission. Thank you. It's a history that has a very human touch. Um, in 1822, in the post, post-Napoleonic era in France, in the south, in a town called Annonay, ten diocesan priests banded together to educate young men in theology for formation towards the priesthood. On the other side of the world, in Toronto, the second bishop of this archdiocese 
Bishop Armand de Charbonnel wanted to establish a school for young Catholic men for their education, which wasn't available to them at the time, and also for theological studies towards the priesthood. And he naturally thought about inviting the fathers who had taught him in France at the school that he had attended. And so 30 years after their foundation in France, some Brazilian fathers came over to Toronto and with the help of Bishop de Charbonnel established St. Michael's College School. It was called St. Michael's because it was in the basement of the bishop's palace at the time, next to what came to be St. Michael's Cathedral. The school did well. The graduates were well-formed, well-educated. They spoke for themselves. Um, by the fruit, we shall know the tree. And so the school expanded to what is now Bay and Bloor at, on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College, it outgrew the building there as well, and so in 1950, it moved to its beautiful location now at Bathurst in St. Clair. Interesting thing about St. Michael's College School, that's, uh, it's, 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 uh, one of its original locations was at what is now Bay and St. Joseph and St. Mary, and uh, it's described as being, when it was set up, it was described as being outside of the city of it Toronto, <laughs> which is uh, pretty remarkable, and I mean... Uh, I, I, I've, I've had uh, two children down at uh, living at Bay and St. Joseph, and if you stand there and say this is outside the city limits of Toronto, that's pretty uh, pretty astounding. So certainly, St. Mike's has been um, it's it's almost a part of Toronto's. Toronto grew and St. Mike's grew, and it's the histories of the two uh, are intertwined. And then it moved to Bathurst and St. Clair in 1950 and of course that is that that is the yellow brick building that uh, that has become synonymous with St. Michael's College School and synonymous with that corner Um, but going back to the Brazilian Fathers um, what um, what's the mission of the Brazilian Fathers? The Brazilian Fathers are devoted to education and evangelization Uh, We have always been in schools and then later in universities, parishes, campus ministries. No matter what we do, we see our role, our calling, as one of educating and forming young people in the faith for lives that will contribute to our world. At St. Michael's, we have always been working in the tradition of the Brazilian Fathers, and we educate our young men in goodness, discipline, and knowledge for a life of leadership and service in faithfulness to Jesus Christ. We stay focused on that mission, and we use the motto of the Brazilian Fathers at the, uh, and keep it at the heart of everything we do, which is teach me goodness, discipline, and knowledge coming from the Psalms. You have, you've had some... Uh uh, uh, pretty successful graduates, and you know, obviously in sports, uh, uh, obviously in hockey, and uh, I guess some of these kids come in grade nine, and um, and uh, they've had a little bit of success in their lives already, mm-hmm. and I'm sure some of them uh, uh, have to be taught certain things. Um, do you ever find uh, you ever find with any of your young men? Uh, when they come to you, that um, you there, they may have. I know humility is an important part of what the Brazilian fathers teach. I know integrity is an important part of what the Brazilian fathers teach. I know character is an important part of what you teach. Do you ever find with sports um, figures or uh, people who have achieved uh, a little bit of? Uh, outstanding success already young in their lives that um, you have to take them under your wing and perhaps uh, uh, teach them? Well, that was a very humbling list that you recited at the beginning of the show. Um, Just listening to those names, knowing the history, knowing the current history as well, uh, it's, it's exciting to be part of it always. And they come to us in grade seven now as well, okay. not just grade yep. nine. They, they come to us from all the corners of the city. Uh, they come to us in all the colors, all the personalities. 
uh, that young men embody. We're happy to have them. They're happy to be with us. And yes, there are, there are those who are further along their development than some. We delight to be part of their lives. And our vision for each and every one of them is to graduate those young men for lives of faith, character, and service that will change the world. Very quickly, Father, before we go to break, and uh, we'll be calling David Keon during the break. Um, you're also a graduate of St. Mike's, I believe class in 1979. That's right. Uh, but uh, you came, you weren't born in this country. No. You came to this country, I believe, at the age of 13 or 12 or thereabouts. And one year later, you found yourself at St. Mike's, a year after you came to Canada. How did that come to pass? My family of four immigrated to Toronto in 1973 from India. Uh, I had gone to a Jesuit school in India from kindergarten to grade seven. I attended St. Charles School in grade eight, making new friends during that year. And a lot of them were talking about St. Michael's College School. We hopped on a bus one day, came down, took a tour, and I was mesmerized. All of us were. It was the place to go. Seeing those young men in their blazers and ties was very impressive. I wanted to be like them. And so I began in September of 74, graduating in 79. My parents, my family, and I have never regretted that. I believe firmly that I built the foundation for my life at St. Michael's. I didn't know it at the time. I don't think any of us does. We come to realize that and appreciate it the older we grow. And this is what I tell the young men at the school as often as I can. They are building the foundation for their life. And when they're 42 or 63, they will know that with certainty. We're talking to Father Thompson, the president of St. Michael's School. We also have in studio with us today, Greg Hook, uh, chief, uh, chief officer of the school. Uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with David Keon. It was a rainy day when Pizzaville brought back the large five-topping pizza special for just $13.99 for a limited time. 